So this is the last video in this series and I'm going to be talking about clinical skills and also just the main take home messages for getting through first year successfully. So this may not be applicable to you if you are on a more traditional course where you have like very separate pre-clinical and then clinical years but on a more integrated course like mine we learn a lot of clinical skills in our first year more than you'd think. In terms of talking to patients, remember the psychosocial, the psychosocial issues that come up when you're working on your PBL case. We work in cases at our university. This means that, for example, you would have a case of a patient who has had really, really high blood pressure and they've gone, gone in to see their doctor. And then it's like a trigger case. So then you would then work around what high blood pressure means, what kind of medications you use, you know, the anatomy of the heart, the renin angiotensin system. But don't neglect the psychosocial issues on, on these cases. I know it's tempting to do so, but they are really, really useful for when you're talking to patients. For example, if you're learning about blood pressure, you need to think about the implications of a patient having to take medication. How would you, how did you think a patient would feel if they learned that they would have to start taking medication for the rest of their lives? Why do patients suddenly stop taking medication? Is it because that they feel better? Is it because that they don't like taking the medication? Is it because they don't see the benefits of the medication? How as a doctor do you think that you could overall improve compliance with medication. So it's these kind of questions that you need to think about when you are looking at your trigger case, not just, you know, the pure science, which I know that we're, that I know personally, I usually try to concentrate on that, but these, these issues are quite important and they do become increasingly important. Your teachers will probably try to encourage you to look at evidence-based medicine. So going on to actual databases to look up evidence for studies for certain types of blood pressure monitoring for example I know that we had a look at that we had to look at the um, the home monitoring versus going in to see the doctor's surgery that kind of thing so just keep that in mind next you'll probably have some kind of a communication skills session that will be involved in your clinical skills work that you do where you actually learn how to do things like take blood and that sort of thing but in terms of the clinical skills that's when you learn how to actually conduct a consultation with a patient take a history so it's really important again that when you're working with either your peers because it's most likely that you'll do this in a role play type of situation use the feedback that you get from your peers and also actors because later on in the course quite often they use actors and you have to talk to them because it's just a lot easier in the sense that it's actually like a real patient because it's someone that you don't know and they're acting in a particular scenario and they're professionals so really use them in terms of getting the feedback that you need to improve also if you go in to see them for a session, tell them what you're worried about in terms of your strengths and weaknesses, what you want to work on, what you want to improve on. You may also be recorded as well, which is also quite useful because then you can look your, look at yourself to see what kind of weird habits you have. I know I have some weird habits and some strange ways of talking to people sometimes. Use the actors and the peer feedback as much as possible. When you're practicing to take a history with an actor, in one of your clinical skill sessions. It's very useful to use the Calgary-Cambridge model of, consul of a consultation, and I will put the link below to this, but it's likely that your university will provide you with a simplistic copy of this. Ours is called the Generic Symptoms Framework, which is basically a framework that you can follow just to make sure that you get all the information that you need from a patient to be able to relay that to the doctor or when you're actually a doctor make a diagnosis so it's really important that you do very good um, gathering of information but as well as that introducing yourself correctly building a rapport with the patient and also closing the session as well so that the patient feels like they have gotten what they wanted out of the session. You can also use ideas, concerns, expectations in this. So this is the idea that the patient may have a good idea of what's actually wrong with them, what actually they're concerned about and what they expect from the consultation. This could be, for example, that they want you to send them for a test or something like that. Sometimes, you know, the ideas, concerns and expectations do not match the ideas, concerns and expectations that you have, but it's useful to know what the patient feels. Just the final word again about preparation. It's really important, again, to do your preparation that's set in clinical skills, probably even more so than anatomy and physiology. 
and the reason for this again is because there's limited time for the teachers to be able to teach you the skill that you're, you have to learn so for example you might have to learn how to take blood pressure and they don't have the, all the time in the world to explain to you the theory behind how you take blood pressure what it means to take blood pressure the physiology behind blood pressure so you need to do this reading first and it's all provided to you most of the time or it is in our case online you just need to read through it you can read around if you like but you just need to know what the hell's going on when you get in there some teachers can get really annoyed if you don't do the prep because you just have no idea and it can be very irritating for them and it can make the session very slow and we don't actually cover everything so it's really important that you do your prep reading to so understand what skill you're going in to learn on that day that's all i can say about that really so that's clinical skills covered now to move on to the take-home messages number one be organised. Number two, take note of feedback and make sure you use it to improve your skills. Number three, make sure you do the preparation work that's set. Number four, please go to your lectures. Number five, take advantage of the free resources that are available to you. Number six, learn what you're supposed to be focusing on this year and try not to get too ahead of yourself. Number seven, if you're worried or stressed, talk to your peers or tutors or even people in the year above. You'll be surprised at how many other people are struggling and you're not alone. Number eight, enjoy yourself. It's not all work. It's your first year and you don't get to do it more than once unless you're a graduate like me and I've done two freshers. But as I was saying, enjoy yourself, have fun and make the most of it. Number nine, there is a life outside of medicine. This is important not only for your health and well-being, but also for your portfolio. Remember that there are societies and various other activities that you can get involved with outside of medicine that can be useful for your CV in the future. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitter at Second Degree Med and you can also like my Facebook page, which is Second Degree Medicine. Thanks again for joining me. Bye.